to another lesson. This is lesson 34, part 1. It's about algebraic expressions. So let's just read this real quick. This may be new to some of you all. Um, so, writing algebraic expressions. An algebraic expression uses numbers, operations, and variables to show number relationships. Variables are letters such as X and Y that represent unknown numbers. Each time a letter is used within the same expression, it represents the same number. So, for example, if X is used like three times in one operation, we know that it's the same value as uh, well, each time it's used, it represents the same value. If you have another unknown, which could be a different number, then you would use a different um, value or variable, such as y, for example. So, to solve algebra, algebra problems, you will need to be able to translate number relationships described in words into algebraic expressions. Study the following examples. So, for example, let me make this a little bigger. Um, the product of five and a number. It's important to know what words like the product, decreased, the sum, quotient. For example, product is multiplication. Um, decreased is subtraction. The sum is addition. Quotient is uh, division. There's also a few more for these, like um, addition would also be, you know, and, for example. They use for addition. Um, and gets a little tricky because they could just be using the and to complete the sentence, or they could be using it as an uh, addition signal. So, the product of 5 and a number would be 5x. This product is multiplication, so when you put 5 and an x next to it, or a y, or any other variable, this means multiplication in algebra, 5 times x. A number decreased by 12. The number is unknown, so we'll use x. x uh, decreased means uh, subtraction, so x minus 12. The sum of 3 and the square of a number, so... 3, the sum is addition, so 3 plus x squared. You'll see different numbers up here, for example, 3 or 4. So um, you'll say x squared. If, if there's a 3, you'll say x cubed. If there's a 4, you'll say x to the power of 4. Or if there's 5, x to the power of 5, etc. 6 less than the quotient of a number. So this division, quotient is division. So, um, x over 2, um, minus 6. I forgot to say and 2. Um, 1 half a number increased by 15. So we have half times uh, one, 1 half of a number increased by 15. Uh, half of the number, which is the unknown number, okay, plus 12. 4 times the difference of negative 3 and a number. So we have, anytime you see parentheses like this and a number right outside of it, means that you multiply everything in here by 4. Okay? Um, so we have, for example, you go 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and 4 times negative x would be negative 4x. Um, so this is negative 3, then we have minus, because this is the difference, okay, 4 times negative 3 minus x. A number less another number, this is also subtraction. x, these are two unknown numbers, a number less than another number. When it says another number, we know we can't just use x's, it has to be another variable. So, x minus y. 10 less the square root of a number plus 3. So, 10 less is uh, minus. 10 minus, uh, what did it say? 10 less the square root of a number 
the number they're using, it, the variable they're using is x to represent that number, plus 3. Okay? Kind of gives you an idea. Um, let's see, next step. So, write an algebraic expression for each description. Use the variables x and y. Okay, let's start with number one. Let's increase this size a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. I uh, hate it when it does that. Okay, so a number decreased by 7. So we're supposed to use x and y, right? So that would be a number, since we don't know what number it is. The number will be x minus 7. Okay, that's for that one. Number 2, the product of 3 and the square of a number increased by that number. So pay attention, guys, to words like the product, which is multiplication, okay, and and is um, addition. So the product of three, and wait, the product of three and the square of a number, okay. So the product of 3 square of a number. So we know that the square is going to be on the variable that we don't know. Okay, so um, let's do this. Product of 3, so we have 3 here. Product of 3 and the square of a number. Okay, so x squared. Okay, so um, and remember product is multiplication, so 3 times x. Okay, so and the square of a number increased by that number. So we need to increase it. When you increase something, you add to it. So let's add by that number. That number, which can't be quantified at the moment, is x. So we have 3x squared plus x. Okay, number 3. The product of 8 and a number less 10. So we know the product is multiplication. We know less is subtraction. So the product of 8 and a number less 10. Okay. Product of 8 and a number. So 8 and the product, which is multiplication, which 8 times x Okay, so what was it? The product of 8 and a number less 10 minus 10. Okay, so um, number 4 is the difference of negative 3 multiplied by a number and the product of 2 and another number. So we have negative 3 so the, uh, the difference of negative 3 multiplied by a number so that number is x and the product of 2 and another number so, and means, um, wait, the, the different, okay, yeah, the difference, so in this case we're subtracting, the difference of negative 3 multiplied by a number and the product of 2 and an another number, 
So remember the product is 2 and another number. So now we will use y because it's another number, not the same number, which is x. Okay. So there we have it. Number 5, less than the quotient of 10, oh, 5 less than the quotient of 10 and another number. So we know quotient is for division, okay, and 5 less is subtraction. So it will be um, 10 and a number. I'm writing slow because I'm using this mouse pad. 10 and a number, you know, less 5. Okay, so minus 5. Okay, uh, number 6. The sum of negative 8 and the product of 7 and a number. So, the sum of negative 8, I'm going to put this here. So, I know it's number 5 because I keep losing my place. So, number 6 will be um, the sum of negative 8. So, we already know by sum means addition. Okay, negative 8. plus <clears throat> the product of 7 and a number. 7, so plus 7 and a number. So we know, pro just to let you know in case you don't know, 7x means 7 times x. Okay. Which is the case for any variable. If you were to put 7y, it would be 7 times y. Okay, number 7. The sum of 16 times, already we see there the sum, so we know there's going to be addition in there. So the sum of 16 times a number and the number decreased by 3 times another number. So 16 times a number, which will be 16x um, let's see, the sum of 16 times a number and the number decreased by 3 times a number. So see how it says, and the number, the number is x, okay, and it said and there, so we know, and can be a little tricky, you kind of need to see it in context, because not every and means addition, um, as you've noticed, I think it was, I forget which one, but. One of those above. Um, so let's see, that would be minus. So, because decreased here by three times another number. Three times y. All right, so 16x plus three, uh, plus x minus three times y. Let's erase this here so we have more room. Let's, maybe this way is quicker. Perfect. Uh, let's see, now we're on 8. Um, also, I know this may be a little late, but I'd recommend you try and you look at it and try and figure it out. And then uh, pause the video, look at it, try and figure it out, and then um, see if you get the answer right. Okay, so a number squared 
plus the number raised to the fourth power. So we have a number squared, x squared, that's a 2, um, plus, in this case, I think it says, yeah, plus, okay. I was going to say I think it says and, but no, it's plus. Uh, plus the number raised to the fourth power. Okay. Now, number nine is the square of a number plus the quotient of four and seven. So the square of a number is this. Okay, plus the quotient of four and seven. So generally with these uh, division problems, you just put whichever one they say first on top then the second one on the bottom. And we're also, guys, we're not actually trying to um, solve these problems. We're just trying to um, put them in a different form. Okay, that is actually workable in the numeric form versus the problem form, the word problem form. So number 10 is... Let's move this over. Okay, 6 subtracted from the sum of 15 and the square root of a number. Okay, so we have <coughs> 6 subtracted from the sum of 15. So we know the sum is addition. The sum of 15 and the square root of, anoth of another number. So we will do 15 and plus, because 15 and the square root of another number. We know the square root symbol is this right here. This number, it doesn't tell us which number, so we're going to use x. Okay, so for the last part, it says 6 subtracted from this, okay? Um, so obviously to know what the, like we put, I know it says 6 here first, but we need to, in order to subtract 6, we need to know what to subtract it from. So that's why we put this here first. Um... Let's see, number 11. A number less than, wait, a number less the sum of another number and 13. Okay, so we have a number x less Okay, a number less the sum, addition, of another number and 13. Of another number and 13. So, this is similar to this one up here. You notice when, when they say subtracted from, you will put this number in the back. In the case of number 10 here, you'll put 6 subtracted from the sum of 15 and the square root of a number. 16 was in the back, but when it says, or uh, let's say last, 6 is last. Uh, but on 11 here, it says a number less. That, you will normally put that number less, which is minus. You'll put that in the front. We do put these parentheses here just to let us know that 
we need to do this first, okay? This operation needs to be done before we can figure um, out what it is in respect to this, okay? So, number 12. The square of the sum of a number and six, okay? So the square of the sum, we know is addition, right? Plus six of a number plus six. Now, if I were to put a uh, the square up here, let's see. If I would just go like that, that would not be correct because we want the square of this entire operation. Okay? If it just said the square of 6, then that's this 2 here would apply for the 6. However, since we want it for the entire operation, we'll put parentheses here. And then this tells us that this 2 applies to everything inside the parentheses. Number 13... is 17 less the sum of two times a number plus another number. So remember, guys, the distinction we made here, when the less, when it says less, then we can go ahead and keep this number in front. If it says subtracted, 17 subtracted from, then we put usually 17 at the end of the operation. So we shall keep it in front. 17 less, let's read the rest, um, 17 less the sum of two times a number plus another number. So 2 times a number, which is 2x. x doesn't mean times in this example just means it's a variable unknown variable to x plus y again we had to put parentheses here um, just because we know like to get what this is we have to first do this problem you know so in a sense the one where it says subtracted from which is number 10 kind of makes a little more sense um, and how you would actually write it out because, okay, we need to do this operation first, so let's just put it in front, you know, but it's just a matter of semantics. Okay, number 14. Well, let me write 14 first. 14, a number decreased by the quotient of 24 and the number. So right away we see increased, we know there's going to be addition, or wait, a number increased by the quotient. Yeah, so we know that there's going to be um, addition here and also division. Okay, so a number increased means addition by, does it say 24, and the number. So we know that the number is still x, because if it was not, it would say another number. Then we would put y under here. So we keep it as x. Okay, x plus 24 over x or 24 divided by x. 15. Okay, the difference of the product of 2 and a number and 15. Okay, so we know that there's going to be um, multiplication. The difference, well, subtraction first. 
of the difference of the product of two and a number. So the product of two and a number, let's see, will be two times x. Okay, difference of the product of two and a number and 15. So this is one of the ones that's kind of tricky because um, this and you could confuse it for, uh, for addition, but in this case it just needs the and there to complete the word problem. So the difference we know is subtraction. Uh, what was the rest of it? And 15. Okay. So that's the answer for that one. Let me erase this. We've learned that going up and down is quicker. Okay, now we are on number 16. So, four times the difference of two different numbers. So, four times the difference of two different numbers. Four times, since we have parentheses, we know this is four times whatever is inside of here. So what was it? Four times the difference of two different numbers. Again, the two different numbers, they don't tell us what they are. So, But they do say difference, so we can't do um, x minus x. It has to be x minus y. Okay, so four parentheses x minus y. Um... Or 4 times x minus y. 17. Again, guys, just like I showed you the one with the power, apply to everything inside there. This 4 applies to 4 times this whole operation in here. Okay. 17. 5 multiplied by the difference of a number squared and 3. So, 5 multiplied by the difference, we know we're going to have multiplication there, Multiply, multiplied by the difference, we know we're going to have subtraction of a number squared and 3. So, we also, um, no, this isn't, this is not, this, this and here is not um, addition, it's going to continue to be subtraction. So, Five, it's kind of similar to up here, multiplied, we know we're going to multiply whatever's in here, by the difference of a number squared and three. So the difference of a number, so that number is x squared. Okay, so we're doing the difference, so it needs to be negative three. Okay. Now number 18, so the product of a number and the difference of 11 and the square root of 100. Kind of sounds like a mouthful, let's read that again. The product of a number, so we know it's going to be multiplication. And the difference, so there's going to be subtraction, of 11 and the square root of 100. So, the number, the product of a number, is going to be x. Okay, so the product of a number and the difference of, so we're going to, multiply 
this number by whatever the difference of 11 and the square root of 100 is. So that's going to be 11 minus the square root of 100. And there we have it for that. Put parentheses here. Okay, moving on. Choose the one best answer to each question. So, a minor league baseball team is giving a local charity the sum of $15,000 and 50 cents for each ticket over $2,000. Uh, sold for one game. Let X represent the number of tickets sold. If the team sells more than 2,000 tickets, which of the following expressions should be used to find the amount? So we have, you can pick from either one of these here. So let's try and write this out. A minor league baseball team is giving a local charity the sum of $1,500. Okay, so we'll start with $1,500. $1,500 and 50 cents for each ticket. So we see and there, so we know it's addition. Okay. And 50 cents for each ticket over $2,000. So, um, 50 cents. Not going to put the dollar signs here. 50 cents uh, for each ticket over $2,000 for one game. Let X represent the number of tickets sold. So we don't know the number of tickets sold. Okay. If the team sells more than 2,000 tickets, which, uh, yeah, if the team sells more than 2,000 tickets, which of the following expressions could be used to find the amount of the donation? So we know that first 2,000 tickets, they won't get this 50 cents for, okay? So... We need to do, they will get 50 cents for each sold over 2,000. So we need to multiply 50 cents by the number of tickets sold, okay, which is x, 50 times x, minus the initial 2,000. Okay, so, for example, if they sell 3,000 tickets, you know, 50 cents times 3,000 would be 1,500, but we know that we need to um, reduce one-third of that, so minus 2,000 um, would be, yeah, $500. So that would be, your answer to that is C, okay? And the reason we put parentheses here is we need to resolve this problem first, okay? To get, to even be able to do this problem, you know, 50 times this, because what is X? We do not know. But this does represent how you would set up the problem. If you knew, for example, what X would be, then you could actually complete it. Um... So, the sum of 3 times, sorry, we're moving on to 20 now. The sum of 3 times a number and 4 times a second number is divided by the sum of 2 and a third number. Which of the following expressions represents this series of operations? Okay, so let me put 20 here so we stay organized. Okay, so, let's see, 
start writing it out. The sum of three times a number and four times a second number. So right there we know we have to use two different variables and we know the sum is the addition okay, of three times the number and four times the second number. So three times a number, we do not know which number. So we'll just put three x as the first variable, okay, plus, so the sum of three times the number and four times the second number. So four times y. Now, let's see, so four times the second number is divided by the sum of two and a third number. So it's divided by the sum of two, okay, and which is plus, well, no, the sum is plus. This and here is just completing the sentence. Two and another number, which we do not know. So we need to use a third variable. Okay, which will be z. Um, now, this is one operation here. This is another operation that we have to do separately before we get the numbers to calculate, okay? So we need to put parentheses around these here, which lets us know that whatever's in here needs to be resolved. Then we get the number here, okay, whatever that may be, divided by the other number, which has to be done here before you can do this bottom number. X divided by Y equals Z. Okay, so let me erase this. And for our last one, we have number 21. Okay, question 21 refers to the following information. Appliance City employees earn an hourly wage plus commission Wage options are shown below. So there's option A where you get paid $7.50 an hour plus 1% um, on commission of sales. 1% commission for sales. Then you have B which is $6 uh, for your hourly wage and 3% commission for sales. So Chandra, Chandra is paid under option B. So we know we're going to be using this portion of the table, okay? If he, I'm sorry, if H represents the number of hours worked and S represents Chandra's total cells, which of the following expressions could be used to find her weekly pay? So, let's start writing this out. So, if H represents hours, so let me read this again. Chan Chandra is paid under option B. If H represents the number of hours worked. Okay, so H represents the number of hours. So we know he gets paid $6 an hour or she. $6 an hour. Okay. We don't know how many hours. So that is a variable which they've already given us to use as... Um, which is actually H, not S. So H represents our, so we have six times H, six times the amount of, amount of hours. Um, then let's see, if H represents the number of hours worked and S represents Chandra's total sales, so Chandra's total cells, we don't know what her total cells are, but we know she gets 3% per cell. So we have to write the percentage here. Uh, 
I know I've gone over percentages in the past, but just for a reason why I put a zero here is if it was, well, 3% would be this, 30% would be right after uh, the decimal point, um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. What would change would be you have a whole at 100%. Now you have 1.0, which you don't really even need to write these decimals. So 33% uh, is less than the whole number, which is why it's behind the decimal point. Um, so we have three times, re S represents China's total cells. So we have 3% times her total cells. Okay, so let's see if that is represented here, and it is. So we have 6H, six times six dollars times the amount of hours plus three percent times the amount of cells. All right. Um, reason why this would not work up here, for example, six plus H hours. You're not adding the hours. You need to multiply the hours. And so your answer is B. Anyways, that's it for, this is actually the first part of this lesson here. It's a, this one's a bit longer, so I'm dividing them up into two. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it and find this useful, please hit the subscribe button um, and like button. Anyways, have a good day. Till next time.